future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Salutations, everyone. You have tuned into the number one show on Channel 2 here at UBN Radio Network, a Dr. Judy WTF. And we have an absolute thrilling and chilling and spilling show today. We have in studio Martha Madison in studio. She's been a big star for Days of Our Lives. And what that really means, folks, is she can really memorize lines. <laughs> Yes, that's that's, that's one career I could never. <laughs> oh God, never. <laughs> really fast. Uh uh. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no double takes. Um, and those of you just tuning in, we are we're heard live here on UBN Radio here in the heart of Hollywood at the Sunset Gower Studios. And you can pull us on Stitcher and iTunes. And those of you that are listening to us online right now, why don't you zip on over to Facebook and like us at Dr. Judy WTF? We'd really appreciate that. And also, we're on Twitter at Dr. Judy WTF as well. And later in the show, we're going to shrink that tune as we normally do. It is a brand spanking new song that nobody's heard before. So stay tuned for that. And uh, preview of coming attractions, Judy and I had the thrill of last night seeing a, a movie that's been out that's been a slight bit controversial. And it was Fifty Shades of Grey. So we're going to put our spin on it, maybe give 51 Shades of Grey. <laughs> And, uh, that is going to be the name of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add nice. the, 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 the 51st piece of that, you know, yeah. edition. And later on, we are actually going to be expanding Dr. Judy WTF, which, of course, stands for What the Freud, to What the Film. We're going to be shrinking those movies, folks. Mm. So we take requests for songs to shrink as well, tunes to shrink as well as movies now. And you can write us at info at Dr. Judy WTF. And I, I'm just curious, for those of you who know me, I'm curious to know what you think, uh, whether you think I, I like the movie or if you think that I didn't <laughs> like the movie. And then I'll tell you the truth because I always tell you the truth. So um, I just really would love to get your your take on what you think I think. So that'd be fun for me. So for you who are listening, do write me and do um, tweet your yes. your opinion of my soon-to-be broadcasted opinion so anyway to our guests i i welcome you i'm so happy Thank to you. have you here thanks for having me and my pleasure our pleasure and i know you've been up to a lot yes and I, yes and <laughs> i know you've done a lot i have and and i know that right now you're you're doing something a little bit different so T tell yeah. us a little bit about what what you're up to currently well you know in hollywood when you can't book work you make work <laughs> so brilliant um, i have teamed up with the emmy nominated group who created divanity which is an online soap opera that um, was nominated for an emmy last year and we are creating a new web series called winterthorn which you can actually check out on twitter at winterthorn one um and uh, we start shooting in two weeks. That's really exciting. It's really cool because it's a very different take on a soap opera. Mm -hmm. It's kind of Game of Thrones meets Tim Burton. Who, who, who came up Tim with Burton. that? <laughs> that is it's so really cool. It's very, yeah. it's very gothic. Mm -hmm. It's very fantasy-like. It's otherworldly. Okay. But it's still about a family, a core family. It's still about a power struggle. It's still about a business empire. It's a candy empire that they're okay. fighting over. So okay. it's a very colorful. Sweet. And, yeah, and sweet. Um, <laughs> it's really fun and totally different. And I think um, because of the team that's putting it together, mm -hmm. um, you know, they really love soaps. So they're, um, they know how to do it right. They know what they're doing. And I'm really excited to work with them. And, and who are some of the other players in um, this particular group? Are um, you allowed to say? I am. We actually okay. just finished announcing our cast today. Okay. Um, my the, mother. There we go. This just in, folks. <laughs> 
My mother is going to be played by Linda Gray, who you might oh know. Goodness. Awesome. Uh, oh my goodness. I love her. She's amazing. Yeah. She played Sue Ellen on Dallas. Okay. Uh, my father is being played by Gordon Thompson, who was um, on Dynasty for many years. Oh, beautiful. Um, my sister, this is one of my favorite parts. My mm -hmm. sister is being played by Kirsten Storms, who was actually, she played my part on Days of Our Lives before I did. Interesting. <laughs> so you guys are actually sisters so, yeah. in a sense. She played the part yeah. of Belle when uh, she was younger. Mm -hmm. I took over when the character was kind of aged a little bit and now we're playing sisters on Isn't the same show something? so it's really fun Kathleen Gotti is playing my aunt and we have a lot of other players Michael Caruso who's the creator of the series is playing my husband mm -hmm. but this whole cast this whole story is about women being in charge yes. so the women are the people in power in this business and in the family mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. men are the roles of like caregiver and um, supporter and stuff so it's really fun for the female audience and, and, and who do you think the the audience is what oh. demographics just women in general or families well, or I think um, it is really geared towards the soap demographic which is women 18 to 49 years old okay um, but you know it's got such a different twist on it mm -hmm. that you really don't know where it's gonna go I mean it has okay. like, so much potential I mean I'm seeing game game yeah. boards yeah I mean it, totally. I, I'm seeing no. potential <laughs> Potential <laughs> dolls, toys. Yeah, you I mean, know what people do with well, products really, like that. Yeah. Action, action figures. Now, Absolutely. is it a weekly? <laughs> is it going to be? How often is it going to well, be? Well, this first season, um, the production has uh, put up half of the budget personally and then we have been crowdfunding the second half okay. um, we have two days left on our indiegogo and um, once all of that is done all that money is going to really great um, creative team who's doing all of the filming and editing and lighting and mm -hmm. but the styling of it is so important mm -hmm. we have over 5,000 pieces of real candy being used as props <gasps> which is so amazing wow. um, and can, you, the, can you say product placement <laughs> There's no problem. I mean, we should, but <laughs> we're not. Um, Why not? I, I, you know, it's our first season. Maybe, okay, maybe okay. in season two. Mm -hmm. But the styling of the clothes and stuff is really the coolest part because mm -hmm. it's kind of otherworldly. So it's not just, it's not typical dress. I mean, there's a lot okay. of feathers and fake fur and stuff involved so, in like skulls. And it's really cool. Feathers and flash? What? Feathers and flash? Feathers and, no, feathers and furs. Well, feathers and be, furs. Okay. Being <laughs> partly in the beauty industry, because I don't know if you know this, but I'm also Paul Mitchell, the school graduate, and nice. I cut hair, and so I'm into that it. world. And <laughs> and so I, I have to ask you, what are the primary colors in the movie? I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's such a girl question. I have to ask it. I well, mean, is it, wait, let me guess. Is it like crimson and royal blue and gold oh, like always, that kind of stuff there's, there's always is teal it royal involved. come on <laughs> there's always teal i hope so i there actually i'm not watching it if there's no <laughs> what our main set um one of our main sets is um teal oh and, okay uh, i feel uh, better now and, okay. and hot pink okay but there is going to be a lot of crimson in this hot there pink teal oh that sounds so royal so it's so very cool very very magical yeah and so I'm just wondering how the audience interprets you because you've been <laughs> a staple as a Days of Our Life uh, well, that, character, and now you're morphing into this other character. So I, I'm I'm not as familiar, obviously, right. with Hollywood as you. So how do people take to? Well, I mean, this? I think for me personally, this is why I'm so excited about this particular project. Okay. Because I've always played kind of the girl next door, mm -hmm. which can get like <sighs> so boring, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but this is the first time that I've gotten to play a woman who is really multidimensional, almost kind of as you are, almost kind of crazy. So, okay, so you, so I didn't say know. the crazy. I didn't say the crazy. <laughs> I said the you crazy. Said the crazy. I own it. It's okay. okay. You're, you're not going to be playing your evil twin. <laughs> not yet. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, you know, she's really, she's really layered, and mm -hmm. um, and. When they brought this role to me to kind of talk to me about it the first time, they said, you know, what we love about you is that th we think this is a great opportunity for people to see the grown up Martha. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I was like, OK, yes, let's mm -hmm. do this because mm -hmm. I am, you know, I want to be able to play more than just my face. You know and what who I mean? wrote this? 
His name is Michael Caruso. Okay. He also wrote four seasons of um, the online soap opera Divanity, which is really popular and kind of the soap opera. So community. is that where we're heading? We're heading online. Is that uh, yes. correct? Oh, that's where everything. Everything going. is heading. That's online. where everything's okay. going. So I online. guess all right. Mm-hmm. So and online. nobody really knows what that business model is going to be mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but everybody wants to be there when that happens. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, so I think now it's just about the currency of being noticed mm-hmm. and getting press and making a name for yourself because there's really not okay. money there yet. <laughs> yes. Well, talking, yeah. ab- talking about getting noticed, uh, mm-hmm. the theme of our show today, actually, I should have announced, is Hollywood and narcissism. And I just <laughs> I just have a newsflash for you, folks. This just in, Hollywood is full of itself. <laughs> okay? Breaking news. Uh, uh, breaking news, <laughs> folks. <laughs> and, and the thing is, I don't care what you think unless it's about me. <laughs> okay, that's that's Kurt Corbain, of course, way back. Pretty much. And by the way, Walt and I were discussing this, not to take it away from this comment, but remember in the book, The Fountainhead? I didn't read it. Well, yeah, anyway, basically. that big book, The Fountainhead, there was a line in there. The, the man says, well, what do you think about me? And he says... Um, Howard Rourke, the main character, says, I don't think about you, <laughs> which is the most narcissistic, injurious <laughs> statement I've ever heard in literature. So this is just, OK, but you know go what? Ahead. That's exactly yeah. that's Hollywood. Right. You know, everybody who wants to be part of that machine mm-hmm. is they're thinking about like I think about what people think about me more of than course. anyone else is thinking about of me. Of course. <laughs> so, right. But that's hard. I mean, I don't I don't know that I would consider myself a narcissistic person necessarily, but I definitely when you're your own product, you have to worry about how you're coming across. Look, I'll own my own narcissism, okay? <laughs> I mean, obviously I like to be in the entertainment field because I wouldn't be having a show and being a public figure. Well, but, gee, Dr. GDWTF. <laughs> Right, but that doesn't right. make you a narcissist. Well, the way I was, I mean, okay, nar- what? Okay, let's define narcissism. Okay. Let's start there. First of all, narcissism is an injury. If we're ta- talking about a personality disorder, a narcissist is somebody who feels not much inside, but who displays as though um, he's really a big deal on the outside. And it's a defense mechanism. It's an ugly defense mechanism. And so we all know that when we've been narcissistically injured, we need to get the supplies. We need to feel good. So a lot of people gravitate toward Hollywood because they're going to get the currency, right? They're going to get the strokes, folks. They think they are. (laughs) Or they think they are, or they're willing to work really, really hard for that. And then if they get the strokes, even for a little while, then they feel really good. And then... As you know, many people fall from grace, yeah. and then they have to go through that. I think people, a lot of so, people, including myself, they go into the industry looking for some validation that they're g- at least good at what they're doing, or they're you know an important person. Um, but that's honestly, you get that kind of validation so rarely. <laughs> even when you're somewhat successful, even when you face some success, it's still a lot of rejection. Okay, so, okay, I just wanted to well, find healthy. There's a, there's a quote here that uh, was in uh, the Journal of Research for Personality uh, back in 06. Narcissism is th- not the byproduct of celebrity, but the primary motivating force that drives people into yeah. being mm-hmm. a celebrity. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And another one is, uh, you know, celebrities are a self selected group of narcissists. <laughs> And then there's high self-esteem, which is healthy narcissism. So there's unhealthy narcissism, which is born out of an injury, which is never dealt with. So they have to keep reaching for the stars, literally, okay, (laughs) figuratively. But the problem is that if they fall hard, they don't know how to recoup. It's not like they have a lovely family or wonderful daughter, necessarily, (laughs) that they can get sustenance from. They've got to go back into something Mm -hmm. to get that, and that's when it becomes unhealthy Mm -hmm. and so to me when it becomes unhealthy is when it takes more than it gives so I, I would love to hear your take on it. <laughs> I mean, I'm having, so many, I'm having I so many thoughts right now. I'm like, God, am I a narcissist? I don't know. That sounds like me. Um, I don't know. I um, I think Hollywood and, you know, I have, I'm also in the restaurant industry and I feel like Hollywood and the restaurant industry are two of the hardest. They are. 
They really are two of yeah. the hardest careers, yeah. and obviously there's a reason I chose both of those. Well, it's right? funny and how I many celebr- how many celebrities own a restaurant. Uh, a few, a lot. I mean, it's yeah. a bunch. A bunch. Um, yeah. You know, partly because you're with so many people and you get to entertain and kind of perform every day a little bit. Um, but I don't know. Maybe there's something about it just being difficult. Um, but I don't know that unless you're in kind of that top one percent of performers, if you mm-hmm. ever really get more than you give. I mean, it's so much. You're you're trying all day, every day, and auditioning all the time, yeah, and putting yourself out there and facing yeah. some harsh rejection, not just easy rejection, but sometimes just some painful rejection. And you're doing that all the time for that one or two jobs that you're going to get every you know, year. Well, well, see, here's the thing: if if you and let's say the industry join together and some light is created, mm-hmm. light in terms of self-expression, money. Um, some form of recognition, something that you're creatively transmitting to the world. Mm-hmm. That's my panel seven. I'm going back to the mind map, which many of you know about. And, and those of you um, that are watching or want to check this out, you can go to drjudywtf.com and see the mind map. It's a nine panel system that Dr. Judy developed. So so on some level, what we do has to be synergistic, right? Yeah. It has to be because right. if you keep doing it and doing it and doing it, doing it and it bleeds you to death, mm-hmm. right? Then, yeah. ugh. Well, I don't, I mean, I think sometimes the getting part of, of the giving and getting part, I think sometimes the getting part isn't necessarily about jobs or money. It's about just being fulfilled that you're actually doing something. Yes. And I think that's why you find a lot of people, including me, doing these side projects that are basically for free because at least there you get some kind of creative f- fulfillment. And well. that's, that's a form of getting. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you can do that for yourself. It's it doesn't not a have way to be, of, It doesn't have to be Oscar winning to it's be It's not work. a way of giving back? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think where it starts t- a turning gangrene on people yeah. is, is where I see cases where people get majorly depressed, cannot mm. crawl out of bed, uh, can literally not function. I've had some and, of those. Um, <laughs> and and, and will we dedicate. All? They they won't even get quote a day job. Yeah, because I mean this is uh, because I, they I, they they can't. Yeah. they can't function. Well, when I so I got I resigned a contract um, at Days of Our Lives. I had been there for three years. I resigned a new deal for three more years. Okay. We bought a house. I was getting ready to get married, mm-hmm. and boom, they were like, "Writer change, you're fired." And I was like, wow. um, "What?" Wow. Uh, I just never saw it coming. And mm-hmm. you know, I had that period of mm-hmm. just I, it was like almost impossible for me to get out of bed. I was so depressed yeah, and just scared. Imagine. I didn't know what to do next. Okay. Um, you know, I just bought a house. I just gotten married, all these things. Mm-hmm. And it was just like the weight of the world. And, you know, yeah, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Am I going to go bartend again? Right. Like, I, you know, I just I couldn't wrap my head around right. the fact that I had made this huge leap and yep. that I was going to go backwards. Yeah. So, of course, we go out and open a new restaurant in the middle of the recession, which was so, not a good idea. So brave, though. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was that, stupid. But, but. Um, but, you know, you you struggle with all of the I mean, it was definitely me fighting with my ego for that period of time. And I think after a while, you just realize that you can't have you just can't have that. Ego get in your way if you want to do this. I mean, there are a lot know, of you just lo- have to be able to eat crap. So well, nice. yeah, but that's so. much much easier said than done. <laughs> it is, but you know what? It's easier to do the more you do it. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. Really, you get yeah. crap immune or something like that. Yeah, I uh-huh. think so. Uh-huh. I had a friend tell me after I left days, they were like, you know, you're not a real actress in Hollywood until you get fired. So congratulations. Okay. <laughs> I was okay. like, all right, I'm one all right, step closer. Then. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Okay. But what, like, how how would you speak to those who are listening, who are in the business and are aspiring to be um, more known in the business and are putting it out and putting it out and putting it out and getting exhausted and mm-hmm. really going downhill as a result of investing into the industry? We're... I mean, we're, I, can't, I don't know where are the boundaries because some people say, I'll sell my soul. I don't right. care. You and know, then when I hear that, I think, wow, that's just, you know, over the edge. Yeah. But how do you what do you how do you how do you navigate these waters? I don't know. I mean, I, everybody's different. And I don't uh-huh. I don't know. I mean, I feel like everybody has that threshold. Okay. I keep saying, you know, if I reach that place where I just can't do it anymore, mm-hmm. I will be done. Mm-hmm. I haven't reached that place yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know what that would really look like. Um, but I think 
you know, you just have to be tenacious. You just have to be willing to go the extra mile. And I've really become, a f- can I cuss on here? Because I've really- You be- can say whatever yeah. you want because this is- um, This is the internet. Okay, right. good. Uh-huh. Well, I've become a big fan of saying like, if you want to be successful in Hollywood, you have to be willing to eat shit and love it. Mm-hmm. Like just, if you're mm-hmm. willing to do that, you mm-hmm. will get there eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's all about, you know, you just, it's it's a prideless business you have to be willing to put that part of yourself aside well well one of the one of the aspects of narcissism i'll talk more clinically and then you can address it from the point of view of of the industry is there are three hallmarks to narcissism as a real disorder which is demean devalue and destroy okay there's no empathy involved so Mm -hmm. now you become an object either you're a good object that will further Mm -hmm. their career (laughs) or you're not a good object and you're in the trash can right okay so that's very very hard because after all, we still want to be interconnected. Mm-hmm. We still want to be regarded as human beings. Mm-hmm. And then when we're, we're, you know, sorry, contract's up. Sorry, yeah, yeah. you're being written out right. and, and delivered. Uh, what, what, what is that? Revenge? It's not exactly revenge, but, you know, revenge is de- delivered best on a cold platter. <laughs> so what is this? Jesus. Being fired from Hollywood is yeah. best de- delivered cold, right. served cold. Mm-hmm. So what? What? What is it in the in the um, the style of Hollywood that doesn't allow for more grace? Just you know, to take you aside and say, "Look, I know you have a family. Mm-hmm. I know you're looking forward to this. Let's sit down and talk about this. Let's prepare you." What's going on there? Well, while you're thinking that, there's a, a Dr. Drew had an interesting comment on that regard, and he basically uh-huh. said that celebrity narcissists aren't egomaniacs with high self-esteem. Rather than they are traumatized individuals who are unable to connect to any in any way to, with other people, they are driven to attain fame and the constant stream of attention, flattery, and empowerment because they need the steady trickle of adoring recognition to take the place of any kind of real self-love and self-respect. Well, there it is. I don't need to say anything. That's pretty much all right. It. And that's the that's the extreme part. And yeah. and for for those of you who've been listening to the way I think. This is a complete reenactment of our family of origin. Mm-hmm. So if we weren't important in our family of origin, then we find another family, a.k.a. Yes, the audience. Hollywood family yes, or the, that, that venue within which we do what, what I call a WTF, what the Freud. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of that, that time period, people say to themselves, you know, WTF did I do that for? <laughs> You know, that's where they're at the end of the line. And right. some of them say, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah, I mean. And, and you just can't tell somebody where it is. Like you said, you know, you're you're full of life. You're totally lit up about it. You know, I look <laughs> in your eyes, it's like, I'm yes. not always, though. Full, you know, I you just, know? I, full like, of what? Life. <laughs> she's so full of life about it. You know, she's just beaming with it. And, it, you know, some people just. It, they make they like look come on Walt you you shine a little bit Listen. put the cap uh, on you, was, you, was, you get shiny you know I get a little that, shiny that was my point full of what <laughs> full of what <laughs> there are plenty of times that mm-hmm. especially like my husband would attest to the fact that I am not full of life about it you mm-hmm. know it's just about finding that next gig and right. I think a lot of being an actor is just about being comfortable with unemployment and trying to figure out what your next job's gonna be okay but do you think that the perspective on Holly Hollywood is a little too harsh or do you think they're no. more humane than we're, we're making it out to be in this Drew Pinsky article? Nope. Well, there's <laughs> nope. More, but, but wait. There's, there's, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I mean, okay. But wait, there's more. This, mm-hmm. one, this one will validate what you're saying. This is really, I found this really interesting. Okay. Uh, I explained the actual particular type of brokenness rooted in self-loathing and self-hatred which drives them to pursue public acclaim. Uh, Dr. Drew spoke of how the people admitted uh, to his care and experienced serious trial, ch- serious childhood drama without exception. He has folks working with him, and he says, "I dare you to find one person who's you know in this g- very unique celebritydom that did not have a serious childhood trauma, and there isn't one." And you you know it's it's interesting because when we talk about core beliefs, negative core beliefs, then when we come from a family of origin that doesn't acknowledge us, that doesn't put us number one, we have a core belief of I'm not important enough, I'm not lovable enough, I'm not Mm -hmm. uh, whatever enough, right? And so that's the driving force. I think a lot of times. I don't think that's true for everybody. Okay. I I mean, I think, I mean, 
Definitely. From I can only speak for myself personally and some of the people that I know. I mean, we definitely have the thing in common where we needed very badly to feel validated. Okay. And I'm sure that's why I the first time I mean I didn't start acting because I wanted to I started acting because my stepmother put me in an acting class when I was a little girl Interesting. but the first time I got applauded yeah. was like oh okay. yes this is it this is I'm so this is great and that's all I ever wanted to do after that was just be recognized I think um that's why I pursued it initially but, I mean, I have a lot of friends who have childhood trauma that are not actors, that are not in Hollywood. So you know, it's I mean, not, I think it's I true mean, across the okay. board. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay, so, so, so each, each case is an individual case. I think so. Of I mean, course. I think you find more of it here because you have so many people here seeking fame and validation. Um, but, I, I mean... I know a lot of people who don't work in Hollywood who are equally as needy for attention. Well, I, that's um, a, that, that's true. I mean, it's just because you 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 have a traumatic childhood trauma doesn't mean you're going to end up on the stage somewhere or no. on TV. But totally. those that do and they're you know narcissists to the max mm -hmm. have um, you know odds are 100 percent that they've had a childhood trauma. But but totally. I believe right. in curse by design. I mean, if okay. I had such a perfect childhood, would I be inventing mind maps and systems and healing human <laughs> disconnect? I mean, right. let's I get mean, real. Listen, All right. You spend the okay. first, first 18 years being raised by your parents and the rest of your life getting over it. Well, as we say on the show. Thank you. Well said. Right. As, as we say on the show, one of jo Dr. Judy's favorite phrases. Okay, it's mine. Childhood is a hostage situation. It's true. You have no choice in the matter. <laughs> None. <laughs> None. Nope. Y you are stuck with with uh, whatever mommy and daddy right. tell but you, you know what? do for you and all that. There could be. There's so many worse cures to that narcissism than pursuing a career in entertainment. I mean, there are so many worse things <laughs> that you could do. I so. can think of at least 10. Right. right. So, you know, maybe this is <laughs> at the least 10 may isms. Maybe this is the healthiest way to address that issue. And yay, good for you. Well, well, OK, so creativity, <laughs> right? Creativity, yeah. making a difference to other people, yeah. uh, self-expression, mm -hmm. healthy narcissism, healthy, yeah. healthy is that, is, that, is that an oxymoron? <laughs> it, no. it isn't because there's unhealthy and healthy. And that's why we're speaking because there are people out there and they're not sure how far to go. And then at one point it's going to suck them dry and they're going right. to, you know, turn into a pumpkin. So well, to speak. if you're starting to turn so, into a pumpkin, you should yeah. probably go back to Indiana. <laughs> it's Indiana? probably time. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know? okay. okay, Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're just um, tuning in. We are having a really amazing discussion about Hollywood and narcissism with Martha Madison and as our special in-studio guest. And you're listening to Dr. Judy WTF here on the UBN Radio Network. And you can pull us on Stitcher, iTunes, and of course, UBNRadio.com. Very good. Don't, don't you think that when you're on uh, the web that you mm -hmm. have more control over... Absolutely. The medium. 100%. Like, look at us. We have yeah. control. We don't have to be hired by anyone. We're doing our own thing. And if we swim, we swim. If we sink, we sink. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and isn't that so? So, so doesn't so it great. feel better for you it to be so in that yes. venue? Okay. Well, when you're working on a network, I mean, there are so many great things about that. But mm -hmm. there are also a lot of, um, there are a lot of things that can kind of change the dynamic. You know, you have five people that have to agree on one thing on one vision and okay. then probably three or four modifications of a script coming down to you and then mm -hmm. you know well maybe I, I mean there's just so many variables in okay. the whole thing and okay. when you're doing your own thing pri I mean basically there's five producers on this project I'm working on I'm one of them um, but we are all working to create one person's singular vision with no uh, no rules no censorship no time constraints no you know and it's it's so freeing because then you really do get the full creative process now the downside is is you know how do you make that make money too um, yeah you gotta monetize it That's yeah i mean there are ways to monetize it um you know, a little bit, but you're not going to make the kind of money you would make on a network, which is obviously <laughs> right. <laughs> what you want, <laughs> right? Eventually, you want, but yeah. then again, how much security did you realize in that? Because I, you know, I guess I'm confused because such a contract that signs you into the next episode aren't there little sub 
contracts yeah. in there that I mean, say, and if we cancel the show, you will get a lump sum of, is there nothing like that going on in those contracts? There are. I mean, all of any contract, not just the soap contract, but any mm-hmm. contract is going to be written for the favor of the network. I mean, or right. the show. It's, right. They're the ones writing the contract, right? right. You can either he do or it she, or not. He or she has the gold makes the rules. Right. right. Um, and you know that going in. Um but you don't think someone's going to offer you three years. Why wouldn't they just offer you one year, you mm-hmm. know, like if you're on the fence? So those mm-hmm. kinds of things you you try to analyze, I guess. But, yeah, you have outs. I mean, I had six, every six months an out for okay. them or me okay. to leave, and they canceled it. Yeah, every six months. So how, how much creative juice are you getting to express in this particular? So much. I mean, so I, much? It, what's been great, I mean, what's been great about this particular thing, Winterthorn, is mm-hmm. that the creator and the writer – um, wants to work with me to you know like he wants to come on who wouldn't in, the, I, in their no, right but mind I mean, but it's okay great. a lot of people don't want okay. their act- a lot of people feel like actors don't have anything to say they don't have anything to contribute <laughs> just stand there and say your line um, but he uh-huh. uh, has been very much like he ca- calls me incessantly, which um, my husband hates. But, uh, you know, asking me ideas about wardrobe and mm-hmm. candy colors mm-hmm. and does this wall look good? Mm-hmm. And who do you think about this part? I love right. being yeah. part of that process. Yeah. And I, I mean, I could see myself switching gears from wanting to be an actor to wanting to be a producer. I can see myself kind of taking that ride. Mm-hmm. But I think I would do that before I said screw it. And, and many people do do that, don't they then yeah. move into productions because and Because you have directing. more control that way. Yes. And you're, you're involved in the creative process more that way. And honestly, there's just a lot more jobs for that. And you're actually involved in both. You're, yeah. You're, you're creating mm-hmm. and you're also acting in it. Yeah. So I you have, have you know, but I, I, re- I prefer the behind the scenes stuff. You do? I do. Mm-hmm. And I think the older I get, the more I get that way. And I, I think part of that is, you know, owning restaurants and stuff too. I mean, I, I like being in charge. <laughs> kind of a control freak. Do, can people see a snippet of the show at this point or when will no. they be able to see this? Well, we start shooting in two weeks. Um, okay. And we'll probably have a trailer out by May, I would say, maybe the end of May. Okay. And I think we're going to premiere in July. So. Well, that's still, awesome. still pretty quick. Yeah. So awesome. as far as narcissism, um, you know, do you, how has that impacted you, for example? <laughs> The narcissism <laughs> of the industry. Industry. Um, right. Gosh, you know, I, I've never really thought about how it impacted me. Mm-hmm. I just think it's so... That's right. You're used to eating a lot of shit and you've become <laughs> shit immune. <laughs> yeah, so I'm you're sh- fine. You're no, fine. You've been inoculated. No, I just think I realized that you can't really have... It's so rare to have really personal relationships mm-hmm. um, in the industry because there's so much, well, what can you do for me? Okay. That... Even if somebody isn't necessarily, what can you do for me? Mm-hmm. It's just hard to trust somebody that much okay. after you kind of get burned. I mean, there's just a lot of people that are going to be wonderful to you and they're going to pass through your life and you're going to help each other out. And maybe eventually, you know, you'll mm-hmm. win an Academy Award on the same night. Right. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Right. But um, most of the time it's, hey, can you help me do this thing? And then I won't talk to you for a year. And then, you know, these mm-hmm. aren't long lasting relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I just think for me, I'm really grateful that I have kind of my core group of people. I already had that kind of in yeah. place that I don't yeah. really I don't need that from anybody Mm -hmm. else and I think that's important Mm -hmm. have your family your few close friends and make that your network Mm -hmm. and don't expect people to personally fall in love with you even if they think you're a great actor or a great and and how can people who are going through this not personalize it so much what what well I think that's part of it don't 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 count on those personal relationships have your own group don't need that yeah you don't need that you have the upper hand that's true then it's just about work yeah Okay. Yeah. Have your core group. Like have your you core have. group. I think yeah. that's really important. And your family. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. then when things go down at work, it's all good. You can come home and shake it off with the people who love you. So we're going to maybe have a trailer by, <laughs> <laughs> did you say June? Hopefully. Hopefully by May June. or June. I, okay. you know, don't quote me. I really don't know how okay. long it's going to take. I know mm-hmm. that they're shooting to release it in July or August. Very, now, very we're talking cool. about social very media, exciting. of course. Okay. Um, do you think that with social media uh, and all that goes with it, uh, under the auspices of narcissism in Hollywood, do you think that narcissism is getting any any better or is it getting worse? <laughs> yeah. Or have you seen any difference? We talk about this a lot on my um, show. We, uh, you know, I think that social media has just 
like exacerbated this rash well, of I, society. I concur, <laughs> I concur entirely. I mean, it's like, hey, look at me. No. I just bought a Vente latte at Starbucks right. and paid for the guy behind me, you know? Right. And it's, it's you. I mean, it's and it's all about how many followers do you have? Yes. I mean, so much so that people have actually purchased these. Yes. That that yes. make you look like you have a lot yes. of followers. <laughs> so it's crazy. Yes. I don't get it. Wait, I want one of those. <laughs> no, <you don't. laughs> okay, I don't. I don't. I don't. But but weren't you commenting the other day about when we make a placement on Facebook, we're showing the world the best of our best. We're not oh, yes. showing well, the worst of yeah. our Well, that's worst, the thing is and it, the best it, it, of our right, best. It's a stage for narcissism. It's because right, everybody is showing their best side and they're not showing them how they, you know lost a deal or right. you know cracked up their car or something i mean right. it's, it's all it's all good stuff and so what i say a lot is you know we as people we are really comparing our worst to their best mm -hmm. but it's an incredibly unfair comparison because yeah. we never see their worst and you know sometimes we're so hard on ourselves that's all we see and it's ourselves no, no different than you know models and stuff and magazine covers for the last 10 years i mean it's all unattainable and it's all not real <laughs> so it's all you know, air, it's i, all I was trying brushed. to make a point to like put a uh -huh. picture of my kids screaming on my facebook every once in a while just to remind people that like kids scream it's always and i think it's hilarious to make fun of my kid but <laughs> you should do that once in a while it's can liberating you, can you make yeah, well, fun of my kids <laughs> too <laughs> She's My poor daughter. <laughs> she's, all, <laughs> she's all of 16 months old, and you're already she's, trying to pick she's a She's going to need Dr. Judy. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys. Make sure you breastfeed your children, please. I did. I did. She did. She still you hates know, me. So, so <laughs> what, 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 what? Well, hey, you know, I have I have a little grandson uh, now. We're uh, arguing. We're our, our big argument is: do the wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town or all day long? So I'll all say, day long. I'll say uh, he says all day long, it's and I'll go long. all through the town, and no. then and then he'll say all through the town, and I'll say all day long, and he'll he'll we'll have this huge argument, and he's two well, years listen. old. He's like. He's. We, we just I'll, have the best I'll have time. To, I'll have to just step in here and say I'm an expert on okay. the wheels and the bus. Oh my God, he's gonna love you. <laughs> and he's gonna watch this episode all day long. All Judy. right, Alexander, <laughs> Alexander. Oops, oops. The, okay, but you don't understand how many versions there are uh -huh. of the wheels I on do. the bus. Oh, you I've do. I've listened to the she, okay. British version. I've Fine. listened to the the you know where the kids dress up like puppets version. I yeah. I've all right, watched. Alexander. <laughs> You you win this round, okay? Yeah, and but, uh, so the, the, this has been recorded in history. I, I, I okay. always talk about the fact it's a terrific twos, whether it's terrifically good or terrifically bad is really the, the, the debate. It's, I think the threes are more fun and challenging because they start to talk. Well, that's all my girlfriends that have kids older than Charlie have said it's not terrible twos, it's no, terrible it's, threes. Yeah, it's the threes. Absolutely. Well, she's terrible 16 months. So. Oh. Well. <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already getting a taste of it. I'm scared to death. Well, maybe she'll be done by age two, right? I don't know. You know, well. she she prefers the nanny over me, yeah, so gonna, I'm going to let the nanny take care of it. I was going to say, it. she's already talking to you in different languages, so you're definitely in trouble. She's so cute, but she is gonna, she's just too smart for me. Does yeah. she have a little part on, uh, in this? No. No? No. I will never no. let her part. No. Look at that. Oh, no. my God. I love my child too much. Oh, no. geez. Mm -hmm. She's going to go to engineering school. Oh, yeah? <laughs> wow. Look at that. Miss yeah. Right Brain wants her daughter to go I do. left brain. I do because do? I want her to be able to have mm -hmm. a job when she's 20. <laughs> Your husband's going to just love what you just said. I know. You know. I've said it to him a million times. Uh -huh. And thank God she got his brain. So he'll, she'll be ready for it. <laughs> she'll be good at it. Well, you know, when, when uh, God passed out brains, I thought he said trains, and, and I missed mine. <laughs> yeah, sure, Walt. Sure. I love it. <laughs> and, and it's so, still going round and round. So I, I, I'm also wondering, uh, since you did the Days of Our Lives, how long ago was that? That was a long time ago, actually. So do yeah, people, I'm... okay, then how do people remember? Uh -huh. Do they they get excited? Like, yay, she's back. We want her back. This is yeah. so, I mean, is I it like that back, for you? Yes, I mean, I now with social uh -huh. media and stuff, you know, I get messages every mm -hmm. day, and it's so mm -hmm. nice that yeah, of course. it's very um, flattering that people still think about it and mm -hmm. still, you know, want to contact me, and um, I think it's great. And it's been very helpful for these other projects that I've been doing. Definitely, like, it's helped with all of the promotion of Winterthorn because it is a soap opera and it is kind mm -hmm. of in that community. And people are like, oh, my gosh, both bells on one show is amazing. So, <laughs> so, that would um, be pretty amazing. So, cool. so again, yeah. how do they contact you? Just so for you those. You can find me on Twitter at Marth 
Twenty-seven. Marth was my nickname. Um, so Marth Twenty-seven. Uh, you can also follow us. Um, I do a podcast every week, also um, every Thursday on tradiov.com called Soapbox, and you can find that at the Radio Soapbox on Twitter. Well, you know, you you want to comment on, for example, you know, you talked about how you know the press and publicity has become more of a currency. Yeah. Than, yeah. Than even money sometimes. Yeah. You wanna, I uh, mean, on that? I think because everything's kind of transitioning to the web. And there, like we talked about earlier, there's not really a a real true model of monetization yet um, for independent yeah. web series yeah. and things like that. Um, that I think a lot of, I mean, you wonder why people do all this. Why do they raise all of this money to make this product that has no <laughs> real business model to it? And I, I think it's because, um, you know, people want to be part of the group i mean they want to have some they want to have some currency in the industry they don't want to lose momentum you know when you are your own product you want to have it everywhere you can Absolutely. and have people think about it everywhere and so i think you know that currency of press is almost as important as monetary currency mm -hmm. well when you're looking for work you know mm -hmm. it's interesting that um, donald trump said basically <laughs> that it doesn't matter whether it's good publicity or bad publicity. That's it true. makes absolutely no difference because at the end of the day, it's still publicity. Right. That's right. right? I mean, he, he's, he's had his ups and downs, and you know he's still yeah. Donald Trump. He's still the That's Donald. Right. It doesn't matter if you love me or hate me. Just spell my name right. There it is. And don't, spell and, and, my and, name right. And don't, make me late, and don't make me late for dinner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you. I think was it you who was wondering about paranoia as an issue when you're the product that you're selling, or did you bring up that topic? I did. Well, I, we were talking about things to talk about, and I. This is something that I have actually had a lot of conversations with my husband about. Okay. Um, and I am so guilty. I definitely have a tendency to like obsess about. Oh my God! Did I did I look this way, or mm -hmm. did I say something wrong? Like, mm -hmm. why aren't they calling me back? Right, you know, I gave right. I gave a good audition, yeah. and I feel like I look the part. And yeah. they never called me again after that. Did I say something wrong? Did right. I do something wrong? Sure. So I I mean I certainly have that tendency. It's definitely one of my faults, um, and it can be really devastating if you let it go too far. Right. Um, another reason to really have your group mm -hmm. to have yeah. you know your people who love you kind of right. shake you out of it and be like don't worry about it it's just a job and like 300 other people didn't get that call either so. right so what do you say in your head you know when you're not saying the wrong things uh, like what did I do what did I say so, was I mean, it my eye makeup yeah. was that wrong you know like if you're not saying that then 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 what's something that you can say that's I more don't I don't know more balanced I don't maybe? have an answer for that this okay. is something I struggle with a lot okay um, I think some jobs are a lot I mean some auditions or whatever um, don't mean as much as others mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. so sometimes you can just kind of blow it off and forget about it mm -hmm. and um, sometimes I don't know there are just times that it just eats away at you I don't know I mean this is definitely something I could use some answers for so well I mean I'm just thinking that that we never know what another person is looking for if you think about dating yeah. right mm -hmm. dating and mating you go out on a date and you think wait a minute I look gorgeous my you know my makeup my hair my wardrobe blah my, blah blah my blah. socks but, match but why you know why isn't he calling me well you don't know maybe his ex-girlfriend from right. five years ago called him the day after mm -hmm. or maybe he's looking for a particular type it's all great it's, and it's fine right. if you're able to rationalize that health healthily right <laughs> Right. But there are some of us who that you could say that all day long and right. I'll still be sure it was because I, you know, was five pounds too heavy or something. You know, what I mean, like, it's yeah. always yeah. something that's damaging. Yeah, yeah. it's you know? always you. Yeah, it's, it's always, always, always your me. fault. Right. 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 So, yeah, I don't have an answer for that one. If anyone does, let me know. <laughs> I mean, my best answer is let's wor all work on our core belief because we all have negative core beliefs. And yeah. the quicker we dismantle them, yeah. then they don't get tripped up and then we don't have to um, keep falling off the pedestal and getting devalued and, and devaluing ourselves in the process. Um, this week, I, I remember working with one young man who's in the industry and his negative core belief that came from a critical mother was so harsh that no matter what, he always walked into the studio with this, this, this feeling of, you know, I'm just, I'm just not enough. Right. I'm just not enough. And that, that whole, um, vibrational or whatever you call it that aura followed him into the room yeah and now we've just got to 
Yeah. Dismantle you know, that. I used to be <clears throat> so calm and cool and collected in the audition room. Yeah. And I think after I left days and then I didn't really work for a while mm -hmm. uh, and I started auditioning again, maybe a, a six months later, mm -hmm. um, I was a nervous wreck. I, I mean, yeah. I and I still struggle with it. I don't know what happened yeah. that f it's you just you get that. I don't know that like. It just takes away some of your confidence. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. makes you doubt yourself, really, where it's the industry's fault. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, yeah, it's hard to shake that off. And you start taking it into the audition rooms. And then, you're, of course, you're never going to book and you're <laughs> because you look like an amateur when you're shaking in your heels. You know, you there's, know? there's no course that I can think of, and maybe I can put one together, and I'm serious about how to become more humane if you're in the industry and you're dealing with people because sure. you're really, really affecting lives, and you can mm -hmm. be triggering some big-time injuries in people. It's not yeah. necessary. But if it's you don't want to work with somebody, <laughs> then you, right. You know, you know there's I mean, another the, way the to do it. The people that are calling those shots and stuff, though, they're not doing it because they – care about your feelings they're doing it oh you know, is man, that it you mean they won't even come to the listen, course is that what no, you're saying they won't. thank you very I'm much so course canceled <laughs> fine no, no, listen, no. i mean you don't want you don't want someone uh -huh. in, a, in a, a head of a studio or something to right. be someone that's like worried about everybody's feelings you've got to make hard shots and you've got lots and lots of money <laughs> to deal with until that person's person is on the downside right and needs you yeah like amy the pascal one he, right now right? <laughs> yeah, right? Man. he needs the person he fired years yeah. ago because now that person's on top and people do that they yeah. fluctuate in the sure. course of a lifetime yeah. right you know there's all there's like there's just a kind of a shield over the whole industry or like a whole mask over everything mm -hmm. and everybody really mm -hmm. underneath it is kind of scared and well you know i'm thinking it would be really really cool that once the show launches why don't you come back i'd love to yeah we love yeah and we, bring and bring the team we, we or oh, come, I would you know love to do that, yeah, yeah. Do that and then we could talk about it we could talk about it from the point of view of creativity oh, yeah. and from the the point can you just tell us what the <laughs> message is in, in just in terms of what's and then, the message and, then, and, when, and um, then with that we're gonna have to okay move on. then we'll go okay. shrink our tune the but message of Winterthorn. yeah is um it's a it's a battle of the women and the family to take control of this candy empire. The battle of the women? Yes, the women, they're all related. Okay. And they're all um, fighting for control of the candy empire. Wow. Yeah, so wow. it's... Um, <laughs> Pretty dark. Did, did you have any uh, yeah. input in terms of the storyline uh, to no. start with? Or? No? no, he had a very cool idea and mm -hmm. clear vision when he came to me the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, I loved it from the very beginning. <laughs> well, being that I'm trying to watch my weight, I hope that Stevia <laughs> sponsors it or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's candy don't empire. Eat, <laughs> don't eat the props. <laughs> no, no, don't eat the props. Yeah, log line. Don't eat the props. Yeah. Okay. Wow, well... This has been the, really, really it's interesting. It's been amazing. So yeah. Thank you so much. It's been energizing yeah. and learning how to how they sap your energy, which uh, <laughs> brings us to our song. Isn't, isn't that a nice segue? Um, it's entitled Energy is the song we're going to shrink, and it's yes. by Zupa Nova. And again, this is an exclusive Dr. Judy WTF song because it's never been heard before anywhere in the world. Ooh. Yeah, it's exclusive. So I'm going to read the words, the okay. lyrics, and then Dr. Judy, Dr. Judy is going to interpret the song. And you can... Chime in too if you went to more of that. So it's going down. So what you about? It's what it. I, if you want it now, say I want it all. Well, I'm gonna interpret the song through the topic that we just spoke about, and I chose the song energy because the industry sometimes zaps energy because it's kind of vampire-ish, if you will. And so I figured we need energy tonight after hearing about the topic. Absolutely. And so it's going down. So what you about, if, if, if you want it now, say, I want it all. And that's the industry. It's the idealization. I want it all. I don't want to be a little star. I want to be a big star. Well, go ahead. Uh, go big or I go want home. it all. Go big or go home. Yeah. I feel your heart, your energy, and I'm loving your energy. I feel your heart, your energy, loving, loving your energy. Okay, so if the industry is the energy, then you fall in love with the energy. Yes. Because particularly, going back to the mind map and the whole model, if you're narcissistically injured, then you're, uh, you're out of energy because someone's injured you. So you need somebody to pick your energy up and say, good job, good job. So... They love the energy, of course. It, it can be energizing. Right. Rocket like NASA. 
so ghetto blasta. When I see your asteroid, I just want to grab you. What's your <laughs> what's your astra? <laughs> we can last all night. Let's make noise. Endless, endless magical. Let it flow. I all right, it's <laughs> go. I'll, I'll I'll slice it a little because uh, you know, just like I have comments already. So you know, it's like a drug. It's like sex. It's like a blast up into to space. And so so that's what it's like. You know, curtains, you know, curtains drawn, the lights are on. So that 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 adrenaline that flows, we all know that feeling. It's amazing. It amazing. So <laughs> I, I let it flow. I can feel your energy. Let it flow. I can feel your energy. Make you want to let's let's go to the other side yeah let's go all night want to do it all night let left brain out of sight and this is what <laughs> we've been talking about left because brain. when martha said i want my daughter to be a uh, an engineer she was basically saying it's logical it's you know i want my logic back because this is not logical it's passionate mm -hmm. it's right brain function right and it's heady and it's 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 kind of playing with the dark side in order to get the light, but not a, not everybody gets the light. Mm -mm. If you feel your heart, I feel your energy, loving your energy. It's coming out of you, and I love the way you are, and I'm all your endlessly. I feel your heart, loving your energy. Yeah, I'm all yours. Like, you know, that's it. I'm I'm now falling into your your uh, under your spell. And, um, and, and I'm loving your energy because it's more than just one times, it's two times. It's high, high times two. And that's what people get out of it. Yeah, the lights are low. Doesn't matter where we are. I can feel your energy calling me. My fair love, my fair love. When you're calling me, I feel your love. I feel your love. Tell me that you're mine and I'll be yours. Okay, so in it is I'm special. Um, you're calling me. And, um, yeah. And, yeah, and special. <laughs> right. And I love the way you are, and I'm yours endlessly. That's how it, the song ends. Okay, so this is a, and, and I watched the video, and it was very interesting. It was very costumized. I think mm -hmm. you'd like it. it you know? <laughs> yeah. There were lots of masks and lots of colors, love and it. It, it seemed like there was the dark side and the light side, and I think in all fairness to the industry, there's lots of light there. There can be. Yeah. It, yes, there could be a lot of light, and then there's also a lot of darkness, and yes. so we're always playing with them. We have to try to manage manage it so we stay, we stay with our own energy and not Zap our energy, you not go Zupa Zappo Nova. We want to go Zupa Nova, not yeah. Zappo Nova. Okay, right. <laughs> and that's the song "Energy" by Zappa Nova, and that is basically our show. I am Walt Lusk, your host of Dr. Judy WTF here in studio with Dr. Judy Rosenberg, and of course Martha Madison. Thanks so much for being uh, with us today. It's been a blast, and we'll look forward to having you back. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. And you can pull us on Stitcher and iTunes, and of course here at UBNRadio.com. So until next time, thanks for listening, and uh, we're going to close out with uh, our song, Energy. Energy.